Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 18 of Blender Master course Materials Textures and Nodes using images as textures If you are new to this course then do check out the previous 18 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment So in this chapter we will be discussing about how do we add images like these as textures on our object So in order to give this cube any type of texture we first need to add a shader editor For this I'll take my cursor over here right click and I'll select the horizontal split. I'll drag this line to the center and left click. Now to convert this into a shader editor, click on this icon here and select the shader editor. Now the next thing to do is that we'll go to the render view and since the blender has EV render engine turned on by default, I'll go to the render properties and switch it to cycles. And now we need to get some image textures for our object. So for this I have opened a browser and see there are many websites which offer you free image textures for Blender and I'll drop the links in the description. Currently the one that we are going to use is ambientcg.com so I'll search for it and this is the ambientcg.com website. And the best part about this website is that you will get lots of free materials, textures and HDRIs from here and that too under the Creative Commons license. For those of you who don't know what a Creative Commons license is, it basically means that you can freely use it for commercial purposes without the need of paying any fees or giving any credits to anyone. So this one is a good website. I'll drop the link of this website in the description and suppose we want to get a brick texture for our object. For this, let's click on this explore all assets and here you can find lots of textures like this one is a brick texture, this one is a wood texture, this one is a ground texture with slight patches of grass, this one is a marble texture. So you can get any texture from here and even the HDRI is like these and to search for any type of texture, you can do that here. So suppose I type brick and press enter, then it will show me all the brick textures that are available on this website. So we'll select this one for our object so I'll click on this and here you can see that there are so many options to download it and all these depend on the file type and its resolution the 16k is the highest and also the PNG will take more size as compared to the JPG so if you want the best quality then you should go for 16k and currently I'll be downloading the 8k file and you can download any of these either the JPG or the PNG for now let's download the 8k PNG file so I'll click on it now I have downloaded this here and since it is a zip folder so before using this in my blender file I need to extract it first so I'll click on extract all and click on extract and now this folder is created and if I open it and now it has all the files in the images for the texture like the roughness displacement and all the other files and now let's see how to import them or add them in our blender project so we are back on blender and to apply that image texture to this object go to the shade editor press shift plus a go to texture and select the image texture let's place it here and to open that image texture click on the open button now you have to browse and open that particular folder where the texture is present and from all these images you have to select the image which ends with color.png or if you have downloaded some other texture then it might end with col.png or the jpg file so I'll select this and click on open image and to see the changes here we need to connect this image texture to the principal bstf so let's take this color socket left click and connect it to the base color of the principal bstf and here is the brick texture applied on our object but it doesn't look very impressive and to fix this we'll go to the shader editor and we have to add an input node so press shift plus a go to input and select the texture coordinate let's place it here and we have to connect this to the image texture so I'll take this object socket and connect it to the vector socket now you can see that the texture looks good on the top it kind of looks perfect here but if you look at the sides then it doesn't look so nice because this is not the brick texture that we were expecting to be applied on the side we expected it to be same as that on the top face but you can easily fix this by going to the image texture and here in the second drop down menu you can set the image projection by default it is set at flat and that's why it appears like this but if I change the image projection from flat to box then the brick texture is applied perfectly but there's also one more way to do this and in fact it is better than this one which which is to use UV maps. For this let's go to the projection method and let's change it to flat. Go to the texture coordinate. I'll take this UV socket and connect it to the vector socket. Now even though the texture appears on all the faces properly but its scale is not correct which means we need to adjust it by going to the UV map. For this we need to add UV editor in our scene. So I'll take my cursor over here, right click, select vertical split, drag this line over here and left click. To change this into the UV editor, click on this icon and select the UV editor. Now in this 3D viewport with this object selected, I'll enter the edit mode by pressing tab and here if I zoom out in the UV editor, then we have this UV map here. So to adjust it, I'll press A to select all in the UV editor and now I can press S to scale it and you will notice the changes in your 3d view editor also so let's scale it a bit more left click let's also adjust it by pressing g 
and let's take it down like this and left click to finalize and we can even fit this entire image in this face so let's scale it up again left click and press g to move it like this and now it looks perfect let's come out of the edit mode by pressing tab key in the 3d view editor and now we can close this uv editor so with my cursor over here i'll right click and select join areas now i'll take this pointer over here and left click to see the texture properly let's go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad now if you see this image closely we'll notice that it's completely flat and to fix this we need to add some pbr images now the pbr images are these images that came in the zip folder that we downloaded these pbr images will define the roughness or the displacement and various other things which will give this texture a completely different look so the first one that we're gonna see is the normal and to add it here I'll select this image texture and create a duplicate of it by pressing shift plus D and let's move it here but this image texture has this color file added and we need to add the image of the normal map for this click on this icon to open the image then you have to go to that particular folder and here in this folder we have two normal files one is normal GL and the other is normal DX so you can add any of the two it won't make much difference for now let's add the normal gl and click on open image now in this node with the normal image go to the color space and change it to non-color the reason for doing this is that the normal map does not have any color it only creates a bump effect on our object it does not give any color to our object so that's why we have to change the color space to non-color but if you look at the previous image texture which was the color image the color space was set to srgb because this image had the color which got assigned as the texture on our object now we need to connect this normal to the principal BSTF through this normal socket but for this we need to add a normal map in the shader editor for this I'll press shift plus a go to vector and select the normal map let's place it here take this color socket and connect it to the color socket of the normal map now I can take this normal and connect it to the normal of the principal BSTF let's zoom out for a better view let's move this slightly but we don't see any changes here for this first I'll take the UV of the input node and connect it to the vector and also you have this option of strength here so if I increase the strength you will begin to notice some changes in the image texture you will notice that higher the strength more realistic your object texture would look now this is because the normal mapping here adds a 3d effect to our image texture and that's why it looked much more realistic than before and now the next thing that we can add here is the roughness for this I'll select one of the image textures and create a duplicate of it by pressing shift plus D and let's place it here to give it the roughness image I'll click on the open image select this roughness.png and click on open image also I need to change the color space from sRGB to the non color now we can connect the roughness to the principal BSTF by taking this color socket here and connecting it to the roughness of the principal BSTF you'll notice some changes here but first let's also connect the UV of input node to the vector here and now you can see that some roughness is added to our image texture you might not see a significant change in the quality and that's because roughness basically depends on the lighting of your system and now the next one that we're gonna add is the displacement for this I'll select one of the image textures and create a duplicate of it by pressing shift plus D and let's place it here now I'll go to open image and select the displacement.png and click on open image now we need to connect this displacement image to the normal of the principal BSDF to see its effect but for this we need to add a bump node here so I'll press shift plus A go to vector and select bump let's place it here now I'll take this color socket and connect it to the height and right now the normal socket of the principal BSTF is connected to this normal image but we want to connect the displacement with the principal BSTF through the normal for this I'll take the normal socket of the normal map and connect it here in the bump node then I'll break this connection between the normal of the normal map and the normal of the principal BSTF by holding the control key dragging right mouse like this and now I'll take the normal of the bump node and connect it to the normal of the principal BSTF now you notice some changes here but before observing the changes let's go to the texture coordinate that is the input node take this UV and connect it to the vector of the displacement also change the color space of the displacement to the non color and now we see here that a lot of detail is added to this texture you can notice slight cracks shadows and a lot of detailing and to adjust this 3d or the bump effect added you have to go to the bump node and here you have the option of the strength so if I reduce the strength the effect will get reduced so let's keep it to a value of somewhere around 0.5 and now it looks like this so all these nodes here basically give your texture a very realistic look previously it looked like this and right now you can see that it has changed a lot and that's the use of all these PBR images and now we have to move to the last one that is the ambient occlusion and after understanding this one we'll revise all of them one more time to get a better understanding so to add the ambient occlusion I'll select one of the image textures 
and we need to create a duplicate of it so i'll press shift plus d let's place it here go to open image and we'll select the ambient occlusion click on open image again now this ambient occlusion basically adds fake shadow to your object's texture to see how it works we first need to change the color space to the non-color and now we need to add a mixed color node here for this i'll press shift plus a Go to color and select the mix color. Let's place it here. Now the ambient occlusion will work with this color.png node which assigns color to your object. Which means that we need to break the node connection from here. Take this color socket and connect it to the color B of the mix color. Then take this color socket and connect it to the factor. And to connect this entire node system to the principal BSTF, I'll take this result socket and connect it to the base color. We don't notice any change here. To see the changes here, first let's take this UV and connect it to the vector. Now to see some colored shadow here you have to go to the color a and suppose i change this to blue color you will notice that some blue shadows are added here and this is what the ambient occlusion does as i told you it adds fake shadows to your object's texture and if you select a particular color from here then the shadow of that particular color will appear on the object's texture similarly if i go to the color a again and change it to green color then you will notice the green lighting and shadows like this so it's a very powerful image map which you can use if you want to give some colored shadows to your object's texture and now it's the time to revise all the images or the image maps that we have covered in this chapter so the first one that we started with was this color.png it basically gave this simple brick texture to our object but since it looked flat we had to add these other pbr images to our texture so first we added this normal which gave it a 3d and a realistic look then we added this roughness which gave the texture some kind of roughness and then we added this displacement which gave the texture this 3d effect or this bump effect that you are seeing and then the last one that we discussed was this ambient occlusion which provided these fake colored shadows to our object's texture and so this is all in this chapter and our next chapter is gonna be the chapter number 19 using the object shape to place material so don't forget to subscribe to our channel press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one